Hello, my name is Sara Signorelli and I'm a PhD candidate at the Paris School of Economics. In this short video, I would like to briefly introduce my job market paper. Several Western countries have adopted some form of selective immigration policy over the past decade. As you can see from this graph, the number of new selective policies adopted by a group of key countries has been increasing steadily over the past 40 years. Despite this fact, there is still a lack of consensus on whether these policies work and on what is the impact on incumbent workers. In my job market paper, I provide new causal evidence on the impact that high skill immigration has on native workers that face a direct increase in competition. Uh, I take advantage of a unique setting where the migration shock is concentrated within a list of well-defined occupations. This allows me to recover the pure competition effect. In terms of methodology, I use a difference in different strategy and I rely on administrative employer-employee data. In a nutshell, my results reveal that natives are largely shielded from the additional competition generated by migrants. Uh, since their employment prospects are unaffected and even the negative pressure on their wages appear to be limited. These results shed new light on a long-standing debate in the economic literature uh, by showing that the burden imposed on competing natives is smaller than what is predicted uh, by the canonical model of labor market equilibrium. In terms of the policy implication, it seems that uh, selective immigration policies can be an effective tool to help firms accessing the human capital that they need, while the burden imposed on the native population appears to be limited. To give you a bit more details about the context, I'm analyzing a French reform that lowers the administrative cost uh, for firms to hire extra European workers. This is more only made possible within a list of 30 occupations facing skill shortages. And by skill shortages, I mean jobs for which there is a scarcity of qualified local labor. The types of uh, occupation concern mostly require a technical school specialization from upper secondary or tertiary education. And an emblematic example are different types of uh, industrial technician. And in the very high end of the skill distribution, we find uh, the computer scientists, for instance. A nice feature of this reform is that at the same time, it establishes a second list of occupations that is based on the same criteria of labor market shortages, but where the increased access to foreign labor is much more limited. This allows me uh, to mobilize a difference in different strategy where I'm uh, comparing the labor market outcomes in both lists before and after the policy change. My administrative data includes information on hiring flows, employment stocks, and wages, and importantly, distinguishes between native and migrant workers. This allows me to look at the impact of the reform uh, on these two groups separately and then uh, compare the results. My findings in terms of employment show that the hiring of migrants within target occupation increases after the introduction of the reform, and this is a signal uh, that firms took advantage of the latter regulation by hiring uh, more workers in these uh, rare uh, skills. On the other hand, the hiring of native workers appear unaffected. And as a result, the equilibrium employment grows, as you can see from this event study graph. Uh, these results are in line with the predictions of the canonical model of labor market equilibrium, if you consider that a migration shock is simply a, a shift to the right in the supply curve. Uh, a result that is more surprising uh, relative to the predictions of the model is what happens on the side of wages. So we might consider that natives and migrants within the same occupation are homogeneous inputs in production, which means that firms will be exactly indifferent between hiring a native computer scientist or a migrant computer scientist. Uh, in this case, then we would expect that the negative pressure on wages would be symmetric across these two groups. This is not what I find in my empirical analysis. I actually show that migrants' average wages decrease significantly uh, after the reform, while native average wages are unaffected. And even when I focus on hiring wages, which are the ones that are expected to, to react the most, I find a significant negative pressure both on natives and migrants, uh, but migrant hir uh, hiring wages decrease twice as much as the one of natives. So this is at odds with the main prediction of the canonical model. And that is why in the last part of the paper, I try to explore the channels uh, that can explain this differential wage effect. The first channel that seems relevant is uh, the existence of an imperfect degree of substitution in production 
even for workers that are employed in the same occupation. And this is because migrants and natives, even within the same jobs, they can specialize in different tasks, and this makes them uh, imperfectly substitutable in the production function. The second channel is the fact that they have a differential bargaining power. And this is explained by the fact that migrants, once they come in with an economic visa, they are tied to a given employer. Uh, so natives have greater outside options, which they can leverage to protect their wages. Uh, a third possible channel is uh, the, the change in composition through native flight. And this is the phenomenon by which natives might tend uh, to switch to other occupations once they're faced with the addition in competition. I test this third channel and I do not find uh, support for this. Uh, in terms of my contributions, previous empirical findings have already failed to, to capture large negative wage effect, but they have often focused on widespread migration waves that affected large portions of the host labor market. And this made it uh, particularly difficult to isolate uh, the pure competition effect, which might have been uh, too diluted to be captured. In this paper, I showed that the negative pressure on wages remains small, even when the group facing an increase in competition can be precisely identified. In terms of the welfare perspective, in this paper, I focused on the group that is expected to suffer the most from these policies, given that I've, uh, I've been looking at natives that have the exact same skills as uh, the migrants that came in uh, through this shock. One may wonder there, whether there are broader benefits for the host economy. This is actually the topic of a second single author paper of mine, where I've been focusing on the side of firms. And I've been showing that firms that were previously constrained by the lack of these skills uh, significantly benefits from these policies by growing more in terms of employment, in terms of sales, and by increasing even uh, their demand for complementary inputs. If you want to have more details about the second projects or uh, my other ongoing work, please have a look at my personal page. I thank you very much uh, for listening to this video and please uh, feel free to get in contact if you have additional questions or, or comments. Thanks a lot.